Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. This is a holiday weekend, so I managed to spend a full day in the workshop doing something for myself for a change. I've repaired the Z-axis uh, DRO on my milling machine. I fit a new scale in the modern type and coder. I show a fair bit of that. Uh, today, being Sunday, I've spent a full day at Beamish uh, playing with steamrollers. I'll edit the video and probably put it on next weekend. I've pulled the Z-axis scale off this milling machine because it, it'll stop working. Uh, I've taken it a bit, it reaches the reed head and there's a little mirror inside of there and the mirror is broken so basically it's sort of obsolete now. These are really old scales and I'm mounting them onto a, a fairly modern uh, console, a fairly mount, mount, modern screen. That's the actual scale of it, it's a glass scale, it's a glass inside of there. And I've ordered a new one, uh, a magnetic one which is a lot smaller and neater than this so that's going to be fitted onto there somehow when it comes in the meantime I've bought a couple of nice RS work lights, uh, machine lights because I've always lacked a light on the on the, on the milling machine and the lathe I've actually mounted one onto the lathe, I'll show that now that's it there puts a nice diffused beam light out, goes anywhere you want and stops where I want it to stop uh, it's made by RS, I've actually virtually unused world stock. The R240 volt uh, which is certainly frowned upon but with a, with a modern RCD protectors in sockets it'll be perfectly acceptable to use and there's only me going to use it anyway. That's one on there and I'm going to put one on the milling machine. That's it working. Putting light out. It's only got a 40 watt bulb in and it can go up to a 60 but it's fully adjustable you can put it anywhere you want it and it doesn't waggle about it'll not Get the blower's droop, so to speak. Happy to not fire the lot of time anyway. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Very happy. So you the a light on here for quite some time. And now we've got one. It'll also help us to fit the new. And cool arrow now when it comes. Very happy. The original scale, that one there, was mounted on these two studs. It's a temporary measure. I think that was seven or eight years ago uh, so I'm going to do something a little bit different, a bit better this time I'm going to mount this piece of aluminium onto there and then mount the new scale onto there but the trouble is this lies away at an angle so it's got to come out like that to be straight um, so I'm going to make spacers, space that to go in there and a bolt to go in there just to jack it out so it's nice and straight run a clock on it to get it through and make sure it's true as well in Alexis this is the new scale, um, this is going to be bolted onto there and there's a magnetic tape goes in there with a cover piece uh, that's all it is, uh, completely sealed, uh, the reed head's sealed, there's no little rollers and springs and things to, to worry about, that's the way they're going now that's the strip there, that simply goes in there, double sided tape and that's the reed head slides up and down there and that's how it works I bought it quite a lot long and I need to be, it's, it's not expensive to get them four or five inches long and it gives you plenty of room to play so the first thing is to drill and tap two holes in here unless I can utilise that one possibly and then mount that piece of angle nice and true and square and then go from there and mark the centre of that drill a hole in there that goes in there with a the space up behind it and one in the bottom and that's going to be plenty strong enough and rigid enough to carry a zero scale Bring the camera in this side of it to see the, the problem I've got. Make sure that, that's going to be there to be straight up and down. It's lying in like that because the, the side of the columns tape bad. The bottom hole is slotted so we can use that to make sure that the piece of aluminium is lying nice and square. And then we're going to make a spacer to jack it out from the top. So that's going to be held on there which is going to be plenty stiff enough to do the job it's supposed to do. I've mounted a spring behind the top bolt which means I can jack that in and out. And I've got a clock gauge on there and the idea is to get that face running through 
Well, the clock here is hardly moving there. So basically it's going to be very near at that, but I can adjust that to get it spot on. So if I take a measurement in there and machine a sleeve slightly longer, then we can keep tweaking it until we get it, until we get it just nice. In all fairness, I can leave the spring in and mount the DRO right head onto that, but it's going to be better if it's bolted solid because it is spring around a little bit. So I'll measure that and then we'll turn a little aluminium spacer piece to go in there. This is going to be very near and then we can use shims to get it absolutely spot on. Like a 28.6 here, I'll do it again. So I can make it slightly long then. Just keep tweaking it off until I get it just where I want it. So I'm sure if you just see this seal out the scrap bin, I'll do the job quite nicely. Nicely, I like using it. So I'm only tips for important tool yet, but this high speed seal blade is doing fine. I haven't shortened it yet. Clumsy bastard here. I've not broke a centre drill for ages. Broke a fucking hell though. Right, we'll start again. Annoying that. It was a bang good special as well. I drill just head into a part of the world. Drill actually be the most tape off. Into a 516 drill it's been. See the reds on this is similar for it as well. Shift off the drill. Do again. This is one of the clearer drills, the ones I give away on it. Once we draw, are really good drills for the cost of them. I do get them enough, and I'm actually going to buy them. I'm normally about twenty pounds for it. And one of the containers of drills, but I have bought them for as little as seven or eight on sales. Right. Shoot. It's just starting to make the horrible noises like I want to snap off noises. 
good thing to be allowed to do that. far away. Right, I've got the spacer installed that's fully tightened up and when I move that it is moving but very very slightly so that once a funny's head taken off that spacer to get it a little bit tighter. The fact that appears to have done it. It all allowed a certain amount of discrepancy on the length of that and that's well within what it's supposed to be. Next thing now is to set it up in that plate and make sure it's lying nice and parallel that way. But that's a really solid mountain that's going nowhere with that. the bottom hole is slotted so I can adjust it. That looks pretty good, a little bit more. This is all fully tightened now, so it should. That's good. So now know that piece of angle is true, run that way true and run that way true. Now we'll just have to mount the adapter for the magnetic tape and then sort out where the reed head is going to be picked up from. But that's a real good start, that's absolutely solid, there's no flex on there. John's happy with that. That now once fastening onto there. I'm gonna take it off now. I know I can square it up and I'll drill and bolt that onto there and then clean it up and glue my tape in, put it back on, then there's a reed head bit to do. But I'm really really happy with that. Just getting the eyeball easy, you can see when it's pushing the drill off and when it's Nicely in a hole, and that looks pretty good at that. Except the drill's pissed, you dafty. Right. Dear me, John. I like it. There'll be a little bit of slog around these holes anyway, so you can finally line it up. I'm going to put three in, only changing one in the centre, be more than enough. 